Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jana from I Learn Czech, and I've decided that I should make a series of videos about uh, the Czech cases or, well, declensions, because there are a lot of you who are asking and who just have trouble understanding what it is about. So, well, we will start with a, a short overview, overview. And uh, in the following videos, I will always focus on one of the cases and when they are used or what their meaning is. So first of all, what is it? What are cases or what are declensions? So, uh, well, uh, Czech is um, a language that is called flexive, sometimes uh, perhaps also synthetic or something like that. So unlike English, um, certain relationships between words uh, are expressed not by different words, but by different endings, by different parts of the same word. So uh, let's say uh, that Praha, Prague is the capital of um, Czechia. And in Czech, I would say uh, Praha je hlavní město Česka. Uh, okay, so some of the words uh, just have their equivalent and, well, it's one word, one word. So Praha or Prague would be the same. Uh, then is would be yeah. Now, in Czech, we do not have articles. So this does not have an equivalent in, in the Czech language. I mean... Sometimes you can translate it as uh, the indicative pronouns, ten tato, but often it's just, well, let's say, lost in translation. Now, well, here, uh, uh, capital, uh, in Czech we do not have one word. We would say hlavní město. I'm not sure if you, in English you could say the capital city. Well, then it this would be capital perhaps like the main and město city. And then we have uh, Czechia, and that would be Česko, and we have this word off. So actually, as I said, the dictionary form, uh, when you look up Czechia, it would be Česko. But look, we do not have Česko in this sentence. We have Česka. And that's kind of where the off is translated or where the off is hidden. So English uh, links words or, well, expresses meaning by separate words in general. While what Czech does is change uh, of changing of the endings. Uh, there's another difference between English and Czech, and it's the word order. I have made a video about it. It's uh, in Czech, uh, but, well, if, if your Czech uh, is on the A2 or B1 level, you can have a look. I'm sure it, it will not be so difficult to understand. But the difference is that the word order in English is fixed. Uh, it is the subject the verb, and the object. And be careful when I use the word subject. Um, it can have a different meaning in, let's say, normal language in spoken English and in linguistics. So a uh, subject in a sentence is, well, the one who is doing something. 
It's the agent, the doer. So V stands for verb, and then O um, means object. So it's uh, like the receiver of an action. So this is fixed in English. And then there are other rules <laughs> that I don't remember exactly. But for example, you would put the place and, and the time somewhere at the end after these three. In Czech, uh, this word order is also, let's say, default. So normally you, you might first say who is doing uh, what to or to whom. However, um, it's more flexible in Czech and there are actually other rules for the word order. So you can, in Czech, start with the object, then have the verb, and then the subject. And how will you recognize that the first one is not the subject, but it's the other one? Well, let's have a look. So uh, let's say that our example sentence would be uh, Peter, Peter, um, is looking uh, for uh, Pavel. So in this case, uh, Peter is the subject. Then we have a verb here, plus a preposition. So that would be the verb part of the sentence. And then Pavel, in this case, would be the object. What will this look like uh, in Czech? Well, if I keep the same word order, it will be Petr, Hleda, Pavla. So, as you can see, Petr hasn't changed. That is the dictionary, the default form, or the nominative, as you will uh, learn later. It's the first. Then we have the verb. Well, as you can see here, in English, it was is looking. In Czech, we only have hleda, uh, because actually the system of tenses in Czech is simpler uh, than in English. We only have the past, the present, the future simple. No continuous, no perfect tenses. Well, there are other ways how to express the meaning. So, Peter is looking for, we do not need a preposition in this case in Czech. So, uh, well, you cannot always translate word by word. So, Petr hledá. And then, you see, there, there is not Pavel, there is Pavla. And if you do not know Czech so well yet, uh, you might think like, oh, what the hell? This is a woman, it's Pavla. Well, no, it's not. This is uh, one of the cases. And, well, so what happened here is that the E was dropped. That sometimes happens. And the A was added. So this is one of the declensions. Uh, well, I can tell you that this is the accusative. But the same ending actually is also in the genitive case. And this is what tells you that this is the object. Uh, because the sentence could also be uh, Pavla hleda Petr. So we could put the object first. See, this is the object. And Petr, the subject, could go last. So, this is the object, this is the subject. And how do I know that Pavla, because there is also the name Pavla, a woman, and that it's not a woman here, 
that she is not looking for Peter? Well, because Peter is in the basic form. Uh, nothing has changed. So if I want to say that Pavla is looking for Peter, then it would be Pavla hledá Petra. But I must say that actually that sentence could be a bit confusing because it could also then mean that Petra is looking for Paul. Um, <laughs> of course, it would be clear when you see the context. So what are Czech cases for? Well, they replace certain prepositions or other ways that English uses to express relationships between words. And we will now have a look a little bit in detail uh, at each of the cases. So, well, st stay tuned. <laughs> And uh, I hope uh, this series will be useful for you. If you like it, uh, please... Uh, give me a like. Uh, you can share this video with people who might be interested. And I'll be happy if you can also join my... <laughs> Jesus! If you can join my subscribers. So have a great day and well, talk to you later. Mm -hmm.